Welcome to the Chilling Project update. Um, my name is Ling Xian Kong, and I work for Catalyst Cloud in New Zealand. And uh, I'm also the current project PTO of Chilling. Um, so before I share the project update information with you, um, may I ask you some questions? So uh, if you have ever heard about Chilling before, please raise your hand. Cool. Nice. Um, so if you have ever deployed Chilling in either DevStack environment or your other testing environment, please raise your hand. Okay, expect it. Yeah, so anyway, um, uh, Chilling um, aims at providing a functional service uh, in OpenStack, and you can also call that a serverless platform. Uh, it was for, uh, initially created by Catalyst Cloud in 2017 and um, was later on improved as OpenStack official project in the end of that year. We have uh, our first official release in Rookie and uh, after this dev, uh, dev cycle with the second one. And as for now, uh, there are uh, two companies the Catalyst Cloud of New Zealand and the AW Cloud uh, in China are the two companies who have done most of the contributions to the project. So as a small project with a small group of people, uh, basically we have uh, complete most of the basic functionalities in last release. Uh, so this is uh, what we have done in this dev cycle. Um, the first, uh, basically we, are, we have been focused on several things such as uh, the uh, feature enhancement, the documentation, and the security, and also the UI, the dashboard. The first is Python 3. For Python 3, I mean not only the Python 3, you know, uh, the code change for the project itself, but also the Python 3 runtime. In Chilling, a runtime is uh, the environment in which the user's function is actually running. Um, we all know that Python 2 will be dead in 2020, so there will be a lot of more uh, code written in Python 3. Uh, so in Chilling, we added a Python 3 runtime uh, as a reference implementation, and also use the Python 3 runtime as default in the Tempest test in Jenkins. And uh, the function timeout. So I think as a user or developer, you really don't want your functions to be running indefinitely, which will cost you a lot of money. And um, in, in Chilling, we added a field, a, par a parameter for the function creation. So the end user can specify a timeout value when creating the function. So when the timeout is reached, Chilling will terminate the function and the user will receive an, a timeout error. Um, you know, you can just specify the timeout when you create a function like this. Less than seconds? Yes, seconds, seconds. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we have spent a lot of um, energy and a lot of time on improving our documentation. So we um, support um, we provide a more detailed installation guide for either developer uh, or the uh, cloud operator. So um, the developer can install Chilling, I mean, in the all-in-one environment by uh, using the dev stack. And uh, for the cloud operator, it, um, we provide a manual, manually um, installation guide uh, on Ubuntu uh, 16.04. And uh, we also provide a configuration guide for the cloud operator. So um, the chilling can be configured to uh, talk to the existing Kubernetes cluster uh, rather than you know, to, to um, install, to set up a new Kubernetes cluster you know, from the scratch. And also we provide some cookbooks for the end user. So the user can um, use chilling by following those guides step by step. In the security part, we supported um, TLS for Chilling to talk to the uh, Kubernetes cluster and the SD service. You know, in most of the deployments, especially in the production environment, 
Um, usually, the, the Kubernetes cluster is exposed by uh, HTTPS endpoints. So um, in order to, uh, for Chining to talk to the existing Kubernetes cluster, we uh, add some config op options in the config file and uh, some code changes to support that. An untrusted image type function, what does that mean? So in Chinling, we support three types of functions. The end user can either create a function by uploading the code package directly to Chinling, or can upload the code package to Swift first and uh, create a function by specifying the container name and object name. Additionally, we also support the image type function. So the user can specify his own Docker image for uh, creating function. So which means the user can run the function written in any program language, so which is very useful and powerful. But that brings um, some security concerns to the cloud providers, especially in public cloud, because the allowing the user to specify his or her own image will make the cloud operator uncomfortable. So we all know that the security is not safe, right? Um, it's potential that some malicious user can, you know, to provide the special designed image and try to escape the container and, uh, you know, to do some things to affect other containers or applications running on the same host OS kernel, right? So, um, but however, thanks to the Kata containers, appeared in OpenStack Foundation or some other technologies like Google Gvisor. So uh, they, they just provide um, uh, you know, some technologies which provide a higher uh, isolation level than containers. Um, so in Qinling, we also support, um, we could support the image type function by leveraging those technologies even that maybe there are some um, you know, uh, vulnerabilities in the image itself. But the, the vulnerability, by using the Kata containers, you know, something, te te technologies like that, um, the vulnerabilities is, can hardly you know, to escape the function and um, affect other uh, containers or applications. And the last thing we have done is the dashboard support. So user can just click the buttons without, you know, rather than um, input, uh, input some parameters in the command line. So um, as I mentioned, we are a small project and uh, the, the service, the, the, the project, the chain itself just works. So basically this is what we have done in this, de in this dev cycle. And uh, later on, I I'd like to show you two demos depends on the time. Uh, the first demo is uh, chaining integration with Kata containers, just like what I mentioned just now, we support um, the, we allow the user to specify his own uh, Docker image to run functions. So uh, he, where is the Docker image hosted? Sorry? Where is the Docker image hosted? Uh, in Docker Hub. Can it be in any other place? Yeah any other places that the chaining can, ha can have access to. Yeah. So here I have two virtual machines. The first one, I have installed all the chaining controller services, the chaining API and the chaining engine. Okay. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit clear enough. Okay. Um, and uh, in the second one, it's an all-in-one Kubernetes cluster but with uh, two different runtimes, the run C and the cut containers. So before I create image type function, I just want to show you, um, you know, to create a normal function. So as a demo user, first I will check if there is a, uh, they all just uh, alias for OpenStack. Because I have already created um, a runtime, a Python 3 runtime, and uh, I think there is no functions here. Yeah. And first, I will create a, a normal function. Uh, first, I will show you, because I have a Python code here, it's very simple. Just to print, print, hello, Berlin. 
So I will create a function using that file. And uh, for the function creation, the first uh, parameter I need to specify the runtime. Runtime ID. Oh, sorry. And also the uh, the code file itself. Uh, yeah. This is code file. And also I need to tell Chinling the entry. The entry means the module. So if you are if you know how to code in, in Python, you know the module name is the file name itself, and also the function name. Okay, that's all. Just runtime and the file and entry. So there's a function created, and the next I will run the function. So in Chilean we call that an execution. And the only required parameter is a function ID or function name. But before I run the function, let's first check if there are some kata containers running. None. And also we will check the run C. Okay, there's a lot of run C containers. We only care about the number. Oh, sorry. So there are 27. And then I will create the function execution. And without any parameter, because the Python code just use the, the default parameter. And uh, OK, now the execution was uh, successful. And we can check the log. It's just a print the, you know, the start execution and then the function output and the finish, finished execution. So now we check if it's Kata container or the RunC container. So we still check the Kata container, no, right? And uh, the RunC, I think there will be still 20, or still, still 27 because we have we already created the the runtime and the runtime under the hood there there are some you know containers running already running so if we uh, take a look at the Kubernetes port we can see there are already some port yeah so now what I'm going to do is create a function using the image which is here, um, yeah, okay, just do this command line. So this time we only specify the image, the image name, right? And we also specify the, the timeout because we don't really want the function to be running indefinitely. And uh, we just create the function, okay. Now, just as the last function, we create the execution. Steal the function ID. So what Chilling gonna do is to pull the image and uh, uh, execute the image according to your code inside the image. So now the execution was, was successful. We still wanna check the log. See if there is some. Yeah, just a print chaining because that's um, that's a function inside the the sample image. And now, if we look at if there is cut continuous created. Stuck. The command is just a stuck. 
Okay. Anyway, first we will we will see if there are more run C containers, still 27, and uh, we just uh, leave the command. Okay. And uh, we will check it later on if there are the uh, Kata containers created. But the basic logic is uh, if the user create function using some specified image in Chilling, it will just create the image in, you know, um, treat the image as untrusted. So um, if you use Kata containers, the image will be running in Kata container. If you use GVisor, it will be running GVisor. And also I want to show you the Chilling dashboard. So here I have another environment. Um, So this is another uh, Chilling installation. So I also created the Python 3 runtime, and I think there's no function yet. So first, we just click the create function, and we give it a function name, because I'm, I'm going to use the same uh, code file uh, as the file just I created just now, so the name is going to be uh, hello Berlin. And we use all the default values for description, CPU, memory, and uh, the code type is package, and the other code types are Swift, object, or image. So we, we are going to upload a code file, a zip file. So how the zip file is created, I will show you. Oh yeah, so that just returns the result. So you can see there are two more Kata containers created. Okay, so back to the function. So I'm going to use the same code file for the dashboard demo. So here I have, uh, I think the content is the same. Yeah, hello, Boolean. And uh, we will create a zip, just, uh, you know, if you are familiar with AWS Lambda, you should, you know, to follow the same, same way. And uh, the zip file is going to be uh, hello, Boolean. And we want to package all the Python files in this folder. OK, now we have a Boolean uh, dot zip. We go back to the dashboard, and we choose file. OK, it's here. And also, we need to specify the entry. And the runtime, we only have one runtime available. So now we create function. And if we want to run the function, we need to create execution by specify the function identifier. Because we only have one function, so it's already selected. And uh, input, nothing. But I will show you how to specify some input later on. And we create execution. Its status is success, and also we check the execution log. You can see the same log. So what if we want to specify the input of the function? Because just now, if you looked at the code, you can see it to receive a parameter called name. So this time, we will create another execution by specifying the input. For example, um, OpenStack. We create function again. Because there is another execution created. And uh, if we check the log, it should print hello OpenStack. Okay. So this is a demo that I want to show you today. And uh, looking forward to the future, there are still a lot of more things we need to do. Uh, the first is function metrics. Um, because we, as public cloud provider, we need to charge the customer according to the function um, resource usage, for example, the CPU or the memory. And also, uh, 
the function matrix matrix can help the, the function developer to debug his own code, right? And also retry, you know, how to um, handle the exceptions properly, either inside chaining or outside of chaining. And advanced auto scaling. Currently in chaining, we only support the basic auto scaling policy uh, based on the execution number. But you know, um, in future, we really want to um, uh, to support an some other advanced auto scaling, such as the CPU load, the uh, memory usage, et cetera. And containerization, because in, pub, in um, Catalyst Cloud, we are in the, uh, we are in the transition of, you know, to ch switch from the uh, Debian package con control system to the containerization. So there's no reason we shouldn't support that. And the local function testing, you know, um, as function developer, you don't really want to test your function by creating the actual executions in the public cloud because it's you know expensive. It will cost you a lot of money. So we are figuring out uh, a proper way, way you know to uh, testing your function in, in in your local environment rather than create the actual execution in the cloud. And um, we are also looking at uh, integration with other ecosystems um, such as cloud event in CNCF and uh, also the serverless uh, platform. And uh, I think currently the three big giants, um, the Lambda AWS Lambda, the Google Functions, and also the uh, Error Functions, they already support the serverless, and also uh, the IBM op OpenWhisk, yeah. So th the next step for us is to um, uh, support such integration with other ecosystems. And if you are interested in Chilling, feel free to contact us either on ARC channel or sending the um, emails on mailing list. And uh, tomorrow afternoon from 1.40 to 2.20, there will be a project onboarding session and I will talk a lot more about the details of implementation in Chilling and uh, you are all welcome to join. Yeah. So that's all I want to share with you today. Any questions? Oh, sorry, I, I didn't follow you. Uh, is there any plan to support like secret to give as an input to the function? Like just for credential uh, for login to any of our services and also? You mean uh, any security way to for the input? For example, if you want to input some passport, password or something. Yes. Um, for now, no. But in future, if there are some credential information you want to uh, input as a parameter of the function, maybe we can integrate with Barbican or something else. Yeah, you can just store your information in Barbican and uh, chilling just to, you know, to try to get all the information from Barbican and uh, as a function input. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, Uh, sorry, I didn't. I really didn't. Uh, is follow. it possible to <coughs> split out Kubernetes of an installation of Chilling? To split out? Uh, to uh, um, carve out Kubernetes. If I want, for instance, to just use the uh, uh, configuration engine. So e just That's the first version of implementation of Chilling without any um, container upstream platform. But um, if you, for example, we also think about to integrate Zune. Beca yeah, yeah, Zun uh, only support containers, but um, when you integrate Zun like that, you still need a layer to um, control or to manage the containers you created for running your functions. You still need to, you know, to queue the containers and you to um, create new ones, and uh, also how to uh, manage the garbage, the, the, the garbage of the, uh, of, of the containers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you still need a layer like Kubernetes or Swarm yeah. to do that. Yeah. Do, uh, without that, uh, without the Kubernetes, just because uh, you have a more granular control. What, uh, what I'm thinking about is uh, our use case. I, I'm uh, in the IOTronics project. In our case, we have IoT devices. So for us, it's not important to be orchestrated over a range of devices, but maybe I just want to have the function running over a different type of uh, device. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. I also um, have discussion with Zoom PGL that he want to integrate Zoom with Chilling, but um, we still need to, uh, you know, to, to, to develop a new layer to manage the, all the containers. Yeah, yeah. Please. Did I get it right that you do? Okay, uh, the last question, please. We, we are running out of time. May I ask? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay. The last question. Um, yeah. Okay, um, the question was um, if he wanted to run a, a same function for several times, if Chinyin will create a new containers to run your function. It, it, was that your question? Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So um, for, very yeah, for, for the same function, Chinyin won't create an um, extra container to run your function. For example, there's, um, the auto-scaling policy is, is for that purpose. For the same function, if you run that, that for, for example, three times, it's only one container, and the container can be, you know, to um, run your function several times, but only one container. Yeah. And is it automatically uh, um, yes. connected after some time? Yes, or? yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah.